Hi there, and uh, welcome to this uh, early impressions of the Forbidden Island. I'll go over the game, tell you about some of the rules, and uh, at the end I'll tell you about my early thoughts on the game and uh, what I think of it. So, this is Forbidden Desert. It's uh, a sequel to Forbidden Island. Uh, so you, you go from a very uh, jungly island to a dry desert. And it's a sequel. So. What makes the game a sequel, and how are the similarities to the, to the original? I'll, I'll go through some of that, and uh, just have to apologize for my English. It's not my native, native tongue, so I'll, I'll stutter a bit and uh, maybe be... yeah. Uh, so, pardon for that. Normally I do in Norwegian reviews uh, for Norwegians, and this is an exception because this game has just been published and there are no videos of it uh, as of now that actually tells you about the game. So. Let's uh, move on to the action. Forbidden Desert, the sequel to Forbidden Island. So, Thirst for Survival. It looks promising. Let's see, we can open this tin box here. There we go. So this is the rule book. It's uh, quite thin, uh, very nice colored, and uh, the rules are pretty simple to uh, to read through. And the inserts inside inside. Uh, this is the uh, threatometer. Uh, this time you place it uh, facing upwards instead of lying down. And as you see, the components are almost ready to be opened and played with. There's no not much assembly needed. So quite nice component actually. Oh, it's metal. Okay, I just uh, lost game, and uh, this is how the board looks like after it. You see, there are two types of tiles. They are normal sand and uh, inaccessible sand. Whenever there are two of the same kind, you just flip it over. So, those are inaccessible. In order to go there, you have to dig it out, like that. And uh, this is how it looks like at the beginning. So these tiles are all randomly uh, placed, uh, and then we place uh, all these desert tiles in order. Uh, the middle here, that's the storm center, uh, center of the storm, so there are no tiles there. Uh, we have the four pieces that uh, we need for the, to build the ship. And we have the ship here, pretty nice. And as I said, this is actually metal. metal. And uh, here are other player pawns. Uh, this tile is also placed randomly and can also be under this uh, tile here. So we have the meteorologist and the archaeologist and the navigator. And as you see, uh, all the player cards have a canteen. Let's see here. Oh. With different values. So the archaeologist actually have only three water levels, while the rest have four. So it starts at four, of course. And uh, as we draw on this storm deck here, we will find the sun is burning and we all get thirsty. So if we all reach down here, when you have no canteens left and we're still thirsty, we die. And if, as in Forbidden Island, if one person dies, the other teams die as well. Because, up, uh, of course, all players are required to fly this machine. So, what's the story here? Well, we flew into the desert and we crashed, of course. We were looking for uh, in, an ancient flying machine, this one. So, our only hope for our success now is to avoid the storm and uh, build back the machine and fly off. But, we don't know where the machine parts are and we don't know where the, the actual ship is. So we have to find all these, these things uh, and then fly off. And as in Forbidden Island, uh, all the pawns have to be at the one, same space and fly off. Now, there is one different uh, thing. Uh, there is no uh, collection of cards this time. Uh, all we have now is equipment cards, which are yeah, jetpacks and uh, telescope. And we have the storm cards. So, how do we play this game? Well, first we set up this uh, difficulty scale here. Uh, this uh, shows how much uh, the storm is uh, moving, depending on the current players. Four and five players. So, with three players, we start at the novice level, of course. Uh, and as in Forbidden Island, after your actions are over, we draw from this storm pile here, 
according to the number here. So as we the storm increases in uh, intensity, uh, that's the number of the cards you, you draw, as in Forbidden Island. Uh, but there are no tiles here that actually disappear this time around. And the actions are pretty, pretty simple. You take up to four actions, then draw storm cards equal to storm level. And the actions are remove, of course, so you can move adjacent, uh, orthogonally, clear sand, excavate, that's finding a part, and pick up a part. And here you may also give water and pass equipment cards to other players on your tile as free. So that's very important, it's free, as long as you're on the same tile. So that's actually the, the easier way to understand the game. You do four actions and draw storm cards. So how does it work? Well, uh, your actions are move, like this. That's one action. And another action is removing a tile. Two. And you can flip it over. Three. Oh, it's an equipment card. So, I uh, immediately draw one of these. That's three. And then four, maybe I just move here. Or I stay still. I don't have to actually have to use all the four actions. So now I draw the storm tiles. And the current level is two. So, one, and here's the actually interesting part of the game, that's the storm. You see here, we see a tile moving to the left, and there's only one tile. So, here's a storm, and we move one tile to the left. One. Each tile that is moved receives a storm sand token, like so. So that's one, and another card. Oh, it's, it turns back. So, one, and two. Two. And now for the interesting part. This tile receives a sand token. As long as there is one token, there's no problem. But now we have two, so we actually lay the other side on top. So these players can't actually be there now. It's illegal to move in there. What they have to do now is to dig out. So the red player is done, then the yellow player is next. So the yellow player has to use an action to remove a tile. Now they are free to move again. So that's one action already. So we can move maybe two and three. And we turn around. Excavate. Four. Okay, another equipment card. Time throttle. Take two more actions during a turn. Very nice. And this can be played at any time. It does not count as an action. And you discard it to the box afterwards. Okay, so how do we find the treasure? Well, we have these uh, locations here. Uh, this location says that the treasure is somewhere on this line here. All we have to do now is to find another kind of this card that points up uh, north and south. Uh, as you see, all the tiles are aligned the same way, with the, the compass on the top left corner. Uh, that is because this matters, this side here matters. Uh, one has on the sides and the other has uh, on the top and bottom. So, when we find another tile like this, that has the engine on it, we know where to find it. But, before that, the white player enters his turn, we draw a card. Oh no, it's a storm's pick up. So, we, the storm is picking up, we move the difficulty slider up one spot. So from the next time on, we draw cards, we draw three. But not, not this time, so we just draw one. And we have sun beats down. So every player that's not shielded by some uh, sh solar shield, loses one canteen level. But uh, that's okay, because we still have three more levels here. Uh, so, red is up again. Uh, well, let's see here. One, two. Oh, look here. Oh, great. So now we have two of the engine symbols, so we'll just see where the line intersects, and we place the engine there. So from now on, this engine will always be on this tile, no matter how these changes in alignment. Also, if the storm moves this tile, the engine falls along, so we know it's there. Now all we have to do is to go here and remove the sand. So he has one, two, three, four. He's reached four actions now. And pick it up. And once you pick it up, you just add it to, to this wonderful model here. But as you see, the board is constantly changing and the sand is always um, uh, rising. And, and sometimes you're lucky. You just get, uh, you move it like this and uh, you see a card. Oh, you have to move two tiles up. There are no tiles to move up, so we are safe for this card. And we'll see again. One. 
here we go, and the end of tile here. So there, there is a possibility that the, the sand storm won't be moving. But now we all, all we have to do is to excavate, uh, pick up this part, and find the rest. And there's a lot to look for. There are five times five tiles to look for, except from this one, of course. And we have to find the actual ship itself. As for the equipment cards, uh, we have quite a few actually. Uh, time file, where you get two more actions. And Terrascope, where you may pick a peak under an, uh, an excavated tile. So let's see here. Mm. Okay, that's the one. Okay, yeah. And the Dune Blaster, we can just blow away all the sand on this tile. Excellent. And solar Shield, whenever the uh, awful sun is raining upon us, we, this one, we are safe as long as we're under this tile here. Jetpack. Oh, I want to go down here where I saw the clue. Okay. Oh. And Secret Water Reserve. All players on the tile receive two water. And that's one other point here. Uh, you all lose water all the time. And there are three tiles here on the board. You see have a water symbol down in the right corner. Uh, if all players gather on that same tile, you can excavate it, uh, turn around. Oh, and all the players that are here will all receive two water each. And then this tile is no longer in effect. So, if uh, one player is here, the other have... Uh, uh, they're all over there. He's uh, very greedy, so he turns it around. Oh no, it's uh, water. And only he gets to water. All these other here are, th are uh, still thirsty. But there is, of course, one of these three that is a uh, mirage. You see. <laughs> So no one gets anything. And so once you have collected everything, like the engine, the so energy and propeller and the compass, then all you have to do is to find this tile, gather there, and you win. Okay, so that's the game and this is the ship you build. It's uh, really not necessary to have this kind of uh, thing in the game, but okay, it's cool. I think so. It's very pimped, you have different colors, no symmetry to the coloring <laughs> and well kids will love it actually anyway so what do i think about the game well the the flow of the game is very similar to that one of forbidden island you have four actions you do them and then you start drawing cards that makes bad stuff happen and that's the, the course of the game just like forbidden island and there are tiles just like forbidden island except these tiles never go away they stay there all the time but now, for the first time that I've seen in a game like this, uh, uh, the tiles shift depending on the storm. So they move around all the time, and depending on this storm uh, card deck here, uh, it moves one, and it moves three back, and up. It's, it's hard to say. And uh, of course, uh, you get uh, the storm picks up card, which uh, escalates the number of cards you have to... increases the number of cards you have to draw each turn. Uh, so it's a very same feeling like Forbidden Island and still it's very different because the mechanisms here are very different than in Forbidden Island. Uh, the shifting uh, sands that moves around all the time and the actual sand tiles that you have to place on the tiles uh, to make them uh, harder to get to and even inaccessible if you have too many. Uh, and there are many ways to lose this game. If you don't have any more sand tiles to draw when you need one, it's game over. If one player gets a canteen down to zero, it's game over. So, in order to have to win, you have to find all the four parts and the, the landing site for the uh, airplane, and then move off as a team. Because you can't have one player alone. So, there are roles in this game, just like in Forbidden Island. And they are very similar, like this one, Archaeologist, he can uh, clear two sands as one action instead of one sand per action. Just like in Forbidden Island, you can flip over two tiles instead of one. And the Navigator, that can move another player, it's okay. And the Meteorologist, he's new, uh, he can actually spend actions to draw fewer of these cards, or even look through the next card that will appear, and put one in the bottom. Uh, so the card will appear eventually, but now you have a bit more control of the the drawing, which is kind of nice. Um, 
So, the game is very similar, but uh, very different at the same time. So I think you can have both games in your collection and still uh, have two different games. So, you don't, if you buy Forbidden Desert, that doesn't mean you don't need Forbidden Island, because both games can be played after each other, and uh, yeah. This time I might feel, oh, I would need a challenge, so I'll get Forbidden Desert, because that's a bit harder. Or I'll get Forbidden Island, which is a bit simpler if you just don't up the ante with the difficulty. And of course, Forbidden Desert is more apt for five players. Uh, with the, uh, the Sandstorm uh, uh, meter, that is actually uh, scaled for the number of players you have. In Forbidden Island with five players, it is possible, but then you have a set collection of cards and with five players that is a bit hard when you only have four symbols and yeah it's not balanced for that one uh, so I, I appreciate this uh, sequel actually it's uh, it feels uh, it feels different and still it has the same flow and it's easy to learn easy to play and fast to play actually as well so uh, I will recommend this game uh, definitely I will uh, and if someone asks me should I get Forbidden Desert or Forbidden Island well, that's a different question because, as I said, you don't. If you have a Forbidden Desert, that doesn't mean that you don't need Forbidden Island. But it depends on the on the number of players, of course, but also on what theme you want. Uh, you don't get this one in Forbidden Island. <laughs> that's the one uh, argument. But uh, uh, it's hard to say actually. For me, Forbidden Desert is a must because it's new for me. It's fresh, but. Once I get to play it, I will. I wouldn't know actually because the I would recommend actually both. Uh, so up to you, I guess. Uh, so thank you for watching, and uh, again apologize for my uh, bad English, and uh, I hope I see you again. Bye for now.